Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the Senna Outrush R helmet and intercom. First and foremost, Senna are an electronics company, but they have been selling helmets under their own brand for a little while now, and they all have their comm systems fully integrated. This Outrush R is their entry-level flip front helmet that comes with a Bluetooth intercom pre-installed and ready to go, which makes it a very convenient choice if the idea of fitting an intercom yourself fills you with dread. It's hard to know whether to review this as a helmet with an intercom in it or as an intercom with a helmet around it, but after a bit of thought, I've decided to review the helmet first and then explain the comm system. The shell is made from plastic and the overall weight is 1722 grams. Seeing as it includes the comm system already, that's a pretty respectable figure for a plastic shell flip front helmet. The chin bar lifts on a button at the front tip and it can be locked into the raised position using this switch on the right ear. The Outrush R is what's called dual homologated, so it's legal to ride with the chin bar locked up. The chin vent on the front brings air up to the inner surface of the visor, which is actually pretty important as there's no anti-fog coating and there's no option to fit a pin lock to the main visor. The top vent slides back to reveal an inlet for air to get inside and then there are channels through the EPS that lead to outlets at the rear so warm air can circulate and then escape. The visor is quick release and it's easy enough to take off and replace. It's got twin tabs as well for lifting and lowering which does make life easy when you're riding in traffic. There are two stages between fully open and fully closed. One, two, closed. And the smallest gap you can get is by just lifting this ever so slightly off the lock, which is really important because there's no misprotection on the visor, getting some airflow through to there is really helpful. The main visor is helped out by some visor which drops and retracts with a slider on the left side of the shell. This one's got an extra step of lowering, so if you don't want it to come down all the way, then give it a light push on the switch. If you do want full coverage, then just push that a little bit more and the visor will drop a bit further. Like the outer visor, there's no misprotection on the sun visor. Now, switching to the interior, the comfort lining for this helmet's all removable. The cheek pads are easy enough to get out, but the crown pad is attached to the neck roll, so that is a bit fiddlier to take out and put back in. Strap fastener, micrometric buckle, completely standard. Pretty much every form of flip front helmet runs that. So now we've arrived at the intercom. The speakers inside this helmet are Senna's 32mm HD speakers, and they sit in recesses by the ear. Cables then lead through the lid and back to this control unit, which is attached to the left side of the shell just here. Then there's a boom microphone that comes around from the left of the helmet and sits in front of the mouth. Plenty of other helmet brands have prepared their helmets for an accessory intercom that they sell you separately, but you normally have to fit that yourself or ask your dealer to do it. This setup takes away any of that hassle and it is incorporated very neatly into the helmet. Perhaps the only downside is that you can't remove the module to recharge the battery. You have to plug the USB-C charging cable direct into the port on the back of the module while it's still on the lid, but that's hardly a big deal really. This comms unit doesn't have a direct equivalent in Senna's range, well, not as far as I can see anyway. It's a modern Bluetooth unit that's got a maximum range of 900 meters. It can communicate with up to three other riders and it's got HD speakers. You can't get anything identical to that as a standalone intercom, but if you want something that will at least match it in all areas, then you're looking at 200 quid or so for a Senna SMH10R or Senna's SF4. This system's pretty intuitive for people who are used to Senna systems and the sound quality from the speakers is good as well. The quick start guide that comes with it is though the most ridiculously quick, quick start version I've ever seen. It tells you how to turn it on and it tells you how to turn it off, that's it. The rest you need to learn either from the linked phone app where you can also adjust a lot of the settings or by downloading the full manual from Senna's website. Whether that intercom though is right for you depends on how you're going to use it. A Bluetooth unit like this one's ideal for riding solo or with a pillion and it'll also be fine for use with one other rider on another bike. It will work for groups of up to four but systems that use mesh rather than Bluetooth will be more likely to be reliable for group chats and they'll also allow bigger groups. So earlier I said that Intercom doesn't have a direct equivalent, but it turns out the helmet does. I thought it looked familiar when it first arrived and it didn't take much digging to find out that it is essentially the same helmet as an MT Storm SV. Now, I think we're all grown up enough to know that Senna hasn't suddenly started making its own helmets and it's actually partnering with an existing manufacturer. That manufacturer is listed on the label inside the lid. It's a Chinese company called Yohei who make helmets for other brands as well as for Senna. One of those brands is MT, hence the Outrush R, and the MT Storm SV being pretty much the same helmet, though obviously with the center one having comms kit. This MT Storm helmet costs 130 quid, and an intercom with similar features to this would cost 200 quid. So buying a similar helmet and a similar intercom separately would cost 330 pounds. 
The Senna Outrush R gives you both together and costs £270, which is actually a pretty good saving on both money and hassle because you don't have to fit the thing. Overall, I found the Outrush R to be perfectly decent, but the biggest downside comes if you're someone who's used to having a pinlock insert to protect against mist. Now, lots of riders are perfectly happy without pinlock protection, so for them, obviously not an issue. But for someone like me, it would be a bit of a problem as I suffer a lot from mist advisors when there's no pinlock. If you've already bought one of these and you're looking for a solution, or if you really want this helmet and a pinlock insert, there is a way. This is not ideal, but the visor from an MT Storm SV has pinlock pins, and it obviously will fit this helmet. So you can buy a clear visor and a pinlock insert for an MT Storm SV for 55 quid, and then put it on this helmet. Just in case you actually want to do that, there are links to the visor and the insert in the description below. Right, let's cover sizing and approvals for the Outrush R. It comes in sizes from small up to double extra large, and there's one shell size covering that range. It's approved to ECE 2205 for road use. Unsurprisingly, there's no ACU gold badge for track use, and it's not been tested yet by the UK government's sharp scheme as we record this. And for the record, the MT Storm SV hasn't yet been sharp tested either. So to sum up, if you want a flip up helmet with an intercom and you really don't want to fit it yourself or get one fitted, and also if you're not planning to ride in groups, then this helmet represents good value for money. It would also be handy though, if you're someone who's used to riding without a pinlock insert. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the Senna Outrush R helmet and intercom. But if there's anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.